Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another session of Noetic Session of Intellectual Discovery. Um, I, I can't tell you how excited I am about the um, discussion that, we're gonna, that you're going to witness today with Stan and Brigitte Groff. I'll also be inviting Jonas Di Gregorio and Christina Soriano to speak um, after we have the interview session. But um, this interview, although it was recorded a month ago with Stan and Brigitte, uh, they're in the audience, of course. Um, um, it, it, and I'm not saying this because they're there, please. Um, uh, I think you will understand why. But it has been one of the five most meaningful conversations I've ever had in, in my life. And, um, and th there are certain reasons for that. Uh, uh, the conversation that we had played a very uh, important catalyst. Um, the timing of this conversation for me was was uh, godsend in a way uh, because of what I'm going through in, in my own personal life. And as we all are going through our own respective journeys and uh, you know um, uh, self exploration, um, um, whatnot. Um, I hope that you'll be able to get some wisdoms of knowledge and some nuggets of gold um, through this conversation. And what I would ask you to do is pay very careful attention to the pauses, because um, those pauses are as important to the equation and the message than what's actually being said. I'll leave it at that and, and, and hopefully... I, I, I suspect that you'll be able to pick up on, on what, I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, but for those who may not be familiar with, with Stan and Brigitte, I'll, I'll just give you just a quick little background. Stan Groff was born in Czechoslovakia in 1931. He'll be turning 90 on the 1st of July. And he's devoted over six decades to researching psychedelic therapy. You may know him very well for his pioneering efforts with holotropic breathwork and transpersonal psychology. He has written over 25, uh, 25 books now, uh, translated into 22 languages, and of course, many of which have been really the basis of countless uh, psychonauts to devote their careers to the field. Uh, it was particularly meaningful to me um, uh, early on in, 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 in my sort of education of psychedelics. Um, his life and achievements have recently been featured in a documentary as well called The Way of the Psychonaut. Um, and... and, and um, and what's important here is that Stan and Brigitte launched the International Groff Legacy Training and two, the two volume textbook for this training, which is also entitled The Way of the Psychonaut Encyclopedia for Inner Journeys, uh, written by Stan and published by MAPS uh, in 2019 is um, a, a must, must have for anybody that's in, in, in all interested in any aspect of what's happening in this industry. Um, Brigitte Groff was born in Baden, uh, in, in Germany. She's a psychologist and a licensed psychotherapist. Uh, she's been leading holotropic breathwork seminars since 1987. Um, they both met uh, at Esalen in 1986 and have been married since April of 2016. Um, so again, um, we're gonna just now show the recording uh, and thereafter I'll hand it over to Jonas De Gregorio, who um, works for Stan Groff as a literary agent and a royalty manager. Uh, Christina Soriano um, uh, is the executive director of the Women's Visionary Council. They were married in, in April of 2019. Um, and both of them established the Psychedelic Literacy Fund, uh, which is a donor advised fund managed by RSF Social Finance, uh, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. But we'll get into that um, uh, after, the, after the interview, uh, because their mission, again, is to is to make education about psychedelic therapy more accessible globally. Um, so with that, I'll ask Josh and Alyssa to please uh, commence the, uh, the recording. I'd ask everybody to please be on mute and stay on mute through, through the uh, this interview process. And then um, we'll, uh, we'll commence thereafter. See you shortly. Stan, Brigitte, it is a sincere pleasure to welcome you to, for this interview session, cannot thank you enough for taking the time. Um, it is, as I mentioned before, it is uh, such an honor um, having followed your work for as long as I have, Stan, 
and uh, and Brigitte, I understanding you know your involvement in this in this you know incredibly important uh, work that that Stan has been involved in, and and helping to promote that even further across uh, across geographies across uh, languages. Um, uh, can't cannot thank you enough for for all your efforts. Uh, uh, it is it has been incredibly impactful. I know to. Uh, the many individuals that that have come across that I know that have come across your work, um, uh, and in fact, uh, it, it continues in a profound way. And so, um, very eager to to get into um, conversation with you um, about your learnings. What has all of this meant to you? Um, so again, thank thank you for your time. It's it's great to to see you. No, thank you, Stan. Now, I, you, usually, before I start anything these days, I have to say that uh, you know, I'm now built 90, 90 years old in, in several uh, weeks. And uh, you know, I have all kinds of other problems with hearing and, and <laughs> seeing and so on. And I have, three years ago, I had a stroke. So it's very difficult for me, these kinds of uh, sessions, you know. Um, because so, you got, uh, uh, it was uh, the stroke was in on the stroke. Speech, yeah, this was, right? not, uh, this was not this was not paralysis. Uh, paralysis. I don't have any problems with my with my arms or my legs, and um, also didn't hit my my mind, mm -hmm. but uh, very very badly my speech center. Mm -hmm. So uh, these days we were always doing with um, uh, Brigitte, you know, she basically knows everything that I know. And um, if, I, if I get to the almost. situation that, <laughs> that I, uh, you know, that I don't get the words and so on, uh, she'll help me. So I would like to introduce her. She is uh, my wife. But we have known each other over 35 years. Uh, we met in uh, SLN, where she was there for, for a year. And we were doing all, all kinds of uh, sessions, shorter sessions, also month-long sessions. And uh, she was coming, coming to all of them. So she basically uh, learned uh, about the the holotropic breathwork that we talk uh, about and uh this was for bef uh, long before there were any trainings for for holotropic breathwork and then uh, after then she working in in uh, germany did trainings and uh, uh you were also a, a training training uh, of Germany in, in German speaking training and do and yeah do the psychology and uh, <laughs> psychotherapy psychotherapy yeah <laughs> okay so, now we uh, connected uh, with each other uh, this was um, six years ago now and we got married five years ago so uh, She's a really wonderful, wonderful uh, wife. I, I will so, say that, that that your your love story is an inspiration. It, it really is. Um, in, have in you seen the, Have you seen our our uh, film? Yes, I have. Yeah, so you know quite a, quite yes. a note about I, about I, Brigitte. I yeah. the film and, and I was going to mention that that at every instance, every. Um, uh, interview that I've seen of you lately, Stan, um, you, you know, your, your terms of endearment for Brigitte uh, come across so, so profoundly, it's very touching. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, that is an inspiration to, to, to many as well, uh, you know, if we can all be so lucky to, to have partners uh, uh, like that in a relationship like that that's uh that's winning the game for sure you know it's not only that we work the same work but uh, but uh, we have doing a lot of uh, 
journeys um, outside and also inner journeys and uh, of course that add a whole other um, dimension you know yes. to in the journey together mm. oh yes i i having a partner to share that with is is uh is is certainly something else um it's so it's really uh, so important uh, to to share these worlds and oh, i yeah. mean i i'm i'm so privileged to be able to do this with my sweetheart and of course he's so I mean, if you if you know his knowledge from the reading is one thing, but if you share, if you're in these spaces together, it just comes so clear how much he knows. I mean, it's just amazing. Oh yes, yes. You no, know, Stan. You know, you you have been so incredibly committed to the work. You know, so incredibly committed to the work, and mm -hmm. and it's been hard work. It's been very difficult work at, at times, I know. What is, to, to begin with, what is the, the one thing that keeps you motivated about the work and, 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 and drives you? You know, I have never found it difficult. Um, um, I know many of my psychiatrists who say they are uh, burnt, up, burnt, burnt out, out, you know. <laughs> Uh, and I had the opposite when I do sessions with people or now women do workshops, uh, you know, it's quite, quite a few people. Um, I got charge of it. Uh, he gets energy know, uh, out of it. <laughs> when it's a, it's a good, good experience or a good, a good uh, workshop, I get a lot out of it, you know. I guess that's when you know you're doing the right thing. When it doesn't, yeah. it's not no longer seen as work or, or effort. Mm -hmm. It's effortless, right? It's, it's the, it's the ultimate Tao. It's, uh, it's doing without doing and where the dancer becomes the dance. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I understand. You know, uh, if you can imagine what it was when this powerful substance, you know, LSD fell into our love and we had absolutely no idea what it is about. And so each session was different uh, for, for my own and also my, my patients. And so it was an incredible adventure. And so I was, uh, for quite a year, I was getting up uh, like early at six o'clock. I would get to the, to the Institute. I had my first session and then um, around um, two or so, uh, I gave it to... Uh, uh, my um, nurses, who also had all their sessions, and uh, there was a, I had uh, eight, I had 28 uh, uh, beds, and so the patients, also all the patients were doing uh, psychedelic experiences. So when after two o'clock, I could, I could give it to my, my, um, patient who just had the experience yes. and I can start another one and you know coming in the evening and uh, go again next day mm -hmm. so it was unbelievable just if you imagine what what uh, the next experience would come it, it was like going into a new journey you know to uh, uh, I can I can imagine what what they were going to America or or you know a completely new situation. Yeah, you know you I on. said to I said to Stan when you know when we do the inner travels, it's it can be really challenging and I mean, as you all know. But uh, and I said, well, now at least you know we have your books, so we have this map, the psychonaut you at least have an idea. I mean, it's still different from what you read, but but we have, thanks to him, we have all this information. And I said, I can't, I can't imagine how you did this, you know, because the people, they're really dying. I mean, it's a serious stuff and they they really feel like dying or go crazy or so. How did you have the courage to do this? And then you said that, well, I'm just so curious. <laughs> And that's true. He's the I most couldn't have curious. imagined anything more exciting, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I, 
I feel that. I think we all feel that when we read, you know, your books. Um, and as I mentioned, the realms of, of, of the unconscious was was profound reading for me. And I stated to you that I had to read it three times. But what was interesting about reading books at different points in your life is that it takes different meaning. Mm -hmm. And and you you understand it so much more. And it and it and you often question whether it even made sense to read it the first time when you did with the limited amount of information that you had. And then when you read the book later, it, it brings up a, a whole new meaning altogether. So- You know, what uh, big, uh, what makes a big uh, important, uh, the, um, whether you had a uh, psychedelic experience. Mm -hmm. So I talk with people who uh, read the book before, and then they had own one or more uh, LSD sessions and suddenly found something that, uh, they read, but they didn't uh, didn't understand it. Now, now when they personally experienced mm -hmm. that, uh, it was very different. Yeah, yeah. Stan, if you I know, we just sorry, sorry, please, please, no, please go ahead. What do you want to say? Yeah, we just recently uh, Brigitte and I were doing um, an interview, um, which is called from uh, psychopharmacology to uh, archety archetypes. Yeah. So I started actually with uh, with uh, LSD, uh, with uh, uh, psychopharmacology, and because we all think at that point that the secret is in the in the substance, mm -hmm. and then what happened? Uh, we did quite a few um, um, people who came uh, and had different kind of uh, psychedelic experiences, and. Um, uh, I was uh, I was watching it and I realized uh, something absolutely amazing. Then each uh, with the same kind of the substances and, uh, and the same set and setting, that uh, the experiences were completely different. So this inter individual and intra individually uh, different. You know, if, when then uh, the session was also repeated, then each of them was very different. So let's say if you have now a psychedelic uh, session and then you have another one two weeks uh, uh, later, you can have a completely uh, other experience. Yes. So I realized we were not doing um, pharmacology because for pharmacology, you have to know what you are going for. You know, when, uh, when you when it's for something for sleeping, people should be sleeping or if it's a uh, headache, <laughs> headache you don't want to be sleeping. <laughs> whereas here you don't have any idea what the, what the I didn't have an idea what what the next experience would happen. Uh, nobody has. So I took it completely to uh, clinics, you know, and um, and even there it was going Through, through many different stages. You know, initially I was doing smaller dosages and, and quite a few of them. And um, uh, one of my patients called, uh, this was like a, um, like a peeling uh, onion or uh, mm -hmm. um, the other one that was the, um, uh, archeology, span like a, like a, a chemo, archeology. chemo archeology, span you know? Yes. Yes. Because you go layer after layer. Mm -hmm. And uh, then at a certain point I went to that there was a, there was a birth experience, which until now psychiatrists don't believe that there are experiences of, of birth. And then from them, even beyond that, there was uh, many of the myth mythological experiences were coming. And the question of where they were coming from, you know, yes. and then at the end, uh, with, with Rick Tarnas, you know, bringing in their uh, archetypes mm -hmm. yes, and uh, astrology, actually. Archetypal that astrology. At this point, you really can understand some, some what is going to happen mm -hmm. when you have uh, transits. Yes. Well, I, I really enjoyed, uh, I, I read uh, Richard's book many years ago. And um, those are um, two, two wonderful. Yeah, two. The, the first one was a very sort of conventional book about you know, the history of, 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 of Western schools of thought. But Cosmos and Psyche was a very brave book for him to write. And I know yeah, it took 30 years yeah. of research. 
and the evidence that he suggests in there and what he shows is profound. And of course, you know, the archetypes take me back to all the readings and, and the studies that I did with regards to Carl Jung. And the way you put it all together, quite frankly, your readings were the first time that I got a true sense of how something can make sense and apply to the material world, can then also apply to the mystical realm. And the same exact principles can apply at a quantum level, you know, scientifically. And 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 when it the same rules can be applied in these three different planes almost. Um, and disciplines, um, you know that that must be so much closer to the truth uh, than than the one-offs. You know, it can make sense here, but it doesn't make sense here. But you know, but if it makes Very sense, much so. it's yeah, good. it's great. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful. So, Stan, just just on that, I mean, with all this time that you've spent on this, and with your learnings and your wisdom, what is the conclusion? that you're coming to now or that you already arrived at long time ago about what this is all about for you in your words what is the meaning of life what is the purpose of life what does it all mean for us to be here well i believe now in a, a, a cosmic consciousness uh, i don't believe that this is a material world uh, it's a very beautifully create uh, so that it seems like it's one, but there are sort of ways and psychedelics, one of them uh, that you can actually get out of it and, and realize that this is, this is really divine, this divine world. This is like Leela, you know, and uh, so if I, if I do, for example, now I would really say, you know, uh, uh, what it was for me about it was something between between um, Hinduism and and uh, ben, uh, Buddhism. Buddhism, you know. Uh, so uh, so at this point, uh, also uh, Jung was talking about something really important, which uh, he said that it's important uh, when you're in the in this world that you don't focus only on uh, things that are happening material but that you have enough uh, time to spend some uh, some uh, inner experiences you know and he talked about finding the the, the self with with uh, in in english would be in capital with yes. in in german and everything is would be capital mm -hmm. uh, so, um, if you spend some time with the with the uh, self, then you get uh, the wisdom, uh, cosmic cosmic wisdom, and then you get a lot of information, and then uh, when you combine somehow what the information that you are getting from the self, and that you are getting whatever you're getting in in the material world, and you experience your life as a synthesis of what's, what's happening from, from inside and, uh, and what you get uh, from the external world. So I think this is, this is very important. When people, you are in some question what's, uh, what I would uh, ask my, my uh, students and so on. Uh, I would say, you know, to, it's important to, to spend a significant uh, time on the inner, inner journeys. And, and, and when you do that, is it ultimately that you come to the realization that as opposed to being humans having a spiritual experience, that we're truly spiritual beings having a human experience here? Yes, well, this is, yeah. Uh, yes. This is <laughs> very much a, a, Pierre de Jardin, you know, as yes. he really said that, and that's a, that's a very true. You know, we are not we are not uh, people having uh, experiences. We are, you know, yeah, divine divine uh, 
beings uh, who are experiencing human experiences. Right, right. You obviously know that uh, and, and may have realized that it seems that consciousness has been evolving at a bit of a faster pace over the last few decades, it seems. And the fact that we're having more and more of these conversations now and opening up the realms to having conversations that even 10 years ago, I wouldn't say were considered taboo, but they certainly weren't mainstream. You weren't having it to the extent that we're having it now. Do you feel, and perhaps this is, goes back to some of the work that Richard Tarnas has done on, on the archetypical cosmology and so on, that, that there is a, there's a particular transition that we're going through now, that this zeitgeist that we're in now has a particular meaning. It's different from other zeitgeists, in your opinion? Well, I think we have never had, you know, in, in on this planet, we have never had a situation where we could describe our this this um, uh, where we would uh, kill our uh, um, species. Humanity. You know, uh, it would have to be some uh, meteorite would come, <laughs> you know, some kind of uh, mechanical me event. Mechan you know, outside. In, but we are in a situation where where uh, humans you know can can now really destroy uh, destroy our planet and and a lot of the other other um, um species. species yeah species mm. so it's a in that sense i think it's very very different mm. that i think we i believe that and, and a lot of people tell tell that from a psychedelic session that we have like an alternative you know it's like a like a cross crossroad mm -hmm. that uh, if we continue doing what we have been doing uh, that we might not make it mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand if we if we use this and make a major transformation mm -hmm. of, of the human species uh, we can probably get to you know uh, 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 where we where we are from from uh, am, apes, you know, yeah, to get to a completely different uh, different species, and some people are becoming that already. I've seen people who have done really systematic uh, good uh, experiences with with uh, non ordinary states of consciousness. You know, I believe they are almost like a different species. Mm. Uh, I actually was. <laughs> would, would I ask, I would have to ask Brigitta to, to read it. I have it on a, on a paper. What kind of things can happen to people, you know, when, when they do uh, systematically uh, in, a, in a positive way, uh, psychedelics or non ordinary states of consciousness in general? Would it be okay? Please, please. That, that was actually one of my next questions. That would be wanted to ask you about it's about not that. it's not up to me it's not up to me these days to to do it myself you know uh, so, i used to do it of course without without notes and stuff like that but. no no please please anyway so i'll be your voice okay yeah <laughs> okay so the question was what do you think psychedelics offer to society and how can we best utilize this technology for raising consciousness and so stan says the uh, the holotropic states of consciousness, psychedelics, breathwork, and others offer on the individual level healing of emotional and psychosomatic disorders, significant decrease of aggression, reduction of irrational drives and ambitious ambitions, inner peace, improved self-image and self-acceptance, self-love. Increased creativity, self-realization, and self-actualization. Also, the shift of the focus from the past and future to the present moment. That's what the meditation is always teaching. Uh, an increase of, of zest, joie de vivre, love of life, and appreciation of beauty. 
enjoying everyday activities, people, nature, music, food, love making. Enhancement of intuition and extrasensory perception. Change of value system and of the life strategy. The development of meta values, Maslow, and a genuine sense of beauty, love and justice. And for the society and humanity, it leads to an increase of racial, sexual, political and religious tolerance. Competit competitiveness is replaced by synergy and cooperation. Ambitious drives are replaced by Taoist creative quietude, Wu Wei. A love of nature is increasing and the emergence of great ecological sensitivity. The feeling of belonging to humanity and a sense of a planetary citizenship. Developing an interest in service for humanity and in work toward a larger common goal. Seeing our planet as Buckminster Fuller's spaceship Earth. A similarity with the experiences of astronauts, the other side of the moon. The vision of the Earth as a beautiful planet with global peaceful civilization. The rejection of violence as an acceptable means of solving conflict. Emergence of spirituality of a mystical nature. Universal, non-sectarian, non-denominational, all-encompassing, all-inclusive and non-chauvinistic. That's it. Those were the changes that happen in people when they do deep inner work. Yeah, The Other Side of the Moon, that was a wonderful film, uh, which was about, I think, about 20 um, uh, American astronauts, you know, uh, they went uh, 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 to the, I don't know, all of, yeah, all, all of them to the moon. And they um, had powerful experiences, mystical experiences, mm. and so they talk about what, what, how they uh, will transform by just by being, you know, in the in the space and seeing the planet from the uh, from uh, above, yeah. from above, yeah. And of course, in psychedelic sessions, you can see it that way, you know. It it seems so simple to do at one level, it seems so simple to implement. Mm. And I find that uh, that brought a tear to my eye, Brigitte, Brigitte. Thank you so much for for uh, uh, for narrating that the way you did and for writing that stand. But, um, you know, it, it, it seems like such an obvious solution for those that have had a, a, a mystical experience with psychedelics or, 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 you know, any psychedelic experience really um, um, that, that, you know, you, you, we're on a path to try and make that ubiquitous and make that available. So, you know, uh, uh, widely and profoundly without the stigma associated with it. Unfortunately, the stigma still resonates with so many people, but I think we're on the right path. And that's why I feel that the current moment that we're in this particular zeitgeist that we're living in, in the present moment is is different it's different in that regards that that we can actually work towards bringing about that change and bringing about that awareness and bringing about that realization because god knows that we really need it at, at this point in time for sure you know it seems too much but i have really seen it's it's possible um actually um we are not we are not sort of uh, uh, trying to teach some people to to do these kinds of the ecology and and so on uh, or um, uh, the uh, the peace and so on uh, people who have done uh, remitted, uh, remitted, repeatedly repeatedly 
uh, this uh, non ordinary experiences, uh, they just develop, they, they become, uh, they have a different uh, worldview and, and a different spirituality at, at uh, Brigitte mentioned, you know. But they just realize they just, they just automatically comes out if, if it's done properly, not, not if you, if people go uh, to, uh, you know, somewhere in the street and, and uh, but if it's a, if it's a properly done and set in the setting with a, with support, mm. uh, all those things can happen. Mm. And I've seen it repeatedly. Have you found that there is a particular psychedelic that works better for novices that, you know, after all their research are now ready to partake for the first time and want to do it obviously responsibly and safely? Is there, is there a particular uh, entheogen that you prescribe to more or ascribe to more? Well, I, I had a kind of fantasy in the past, you know, trying to create a center in which all these possibilities would be available. And then you can go in a certain stage, stages, for example, some people can start with uh, uh, Fritz Perls, you know, with the Gestalt. And then and the next would be like a, a, a psychotic, a, a, a psychedelic, no, not a psychotic no, experience. No, no. this. Um, <laughs> Um, breath work, you know, holotropic, uh, holotropic breath work, holotropic breath work. work. and then you can do something like uh, DMA, uh, MDMA. MDMA, MDMA you know. is a very good, gentle start and it's very, uh, start. very heart you opening. Know. Yes. Yeah, and from then, you know, you can do probably mushrooms would be, the, and uh, well, LSD then. So. Uh, Ketamine is very easy for people also. It would be somewhere at the beginning, they could, they could do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are now very, very excited about the uh, methoxy DMT. Yes. Uh, that is an unbelievable, I believe that the future of, of uh, uh, something for, for uh, psychotherapy. Well, but it also leads to to a subject that's really close to our heart, uh, which is like you, you already said that, um, you know, you have to integrate this experience and also also it's very existential. And, and so you you need somebody to accompany these sessions. I yeah. mean, the people need to be trained. It's not a medic. It's not a medicine like a pill against a headache or some psychedelics are not pills. You know, it's like. Oh, I have a depression. I take a psilocybin pill and then the depression is gone. No, it's not. It's like what, what changes your state of, of mind or emotion is the experience and the experience. I and mean, we're dealing with powerful spiritual death rebirth processes. I mean, that, I always say it's not a Sunday walk and it's not cookies, what it, what it, you know, so right now, it's really important that that there's going to be many people trained who are have their own experiences mm -hmm. and who can be accompanying other people for therapy for self exploration for you know and so so this is really our passion that's why we also have created our new training and and this new the psychedelic renaissance is great but it's also has some dangerous sides to it if if this is not handled properly it it could go down the hill again you know because because um, so this is really where our passion is uh yeah at, to, yeah th you know. there's a lot of money coming into the space now and there's a lot of attention being given to the space there are a lot of entrepreneurs there are a lot of scientists there are a lot of researchers that are getting funded uh, and, and very interesting parties and a lot of very bad actors are also in this space, unfortunately. So what is it that we should really be focused on here? What is it that we shouldn't be doing? Could you, could you speak a little bit to that, Brigitte and Stan? Well, you know, first of all, but that, that's a very difficult one. We had to change completely uh, psychiatry, psychology because there's this uh, still uh, a very uh, mechanistic, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
Paradigm. So still, yeah, still, we have now a transpersonal psychology, but it's not integrated. You know, it's because there's enough people who, who believe that it's an important thing, transpersonal psychology. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they don't integrate, they don't accept, accept it, you know. So if it happens, if we really can integrate uh, uh, psychology, uh, transpersonal psychology, then we don't have even say transpersonal psychology because we have psychology, mm -hmm. but it would be just uh, much, much bigger and uh, the capacities that would have, you know, uh, much much higher the integration of the, example, of the basic, perinatal level yeah. and, the, and the transpersonal and spiritual level in the in the paradigm in the, so, in the science so in the it's, it's for, for that it's very very bad to go for uh, for uh, psychedelics with our uh, traditional psychiatry yeah yes i mean because uh, it had had been the beginning you know, we, we were co uh, talking about uh, Psych, uh, uh, experimental psychosis mm -hmm. for for LSD and so on. Right. Uh, it's called still some of the people who are now starting uh, psychedelics. They also call it hallucinogenic, uh, hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic or mm -hmm. psychoto psychotomimic, you know, mm -hmm. which is just totally totally wrong. So this, this, we would have to start there. We would have to have a different kind of uh, psychiatry, psychology for that before we can work with it. Then of course, people have to have um, uh, th theoretically, you know, th no, theoretically before they go into it. And then of course, ideally, People would have people would be have doing it. They should have the experiences themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't think people should wear psychedelic experiences unless they know what they are dealing with. Oh, exactly, absolutely, one hundred percent. You know, many psychologists ask me, a psychologist may ask me. Uh, they say, "Well, you know, I'm a doctor, and uh, I can't take every substance uh, that uh, I give you my patients." You know, they say. And I try to say, well, psychedelics are a little different, you know. And you really don't have a new, uh, no, you don't have an idea if you if you um, have one of these um, psychedelics. Yeah, no, that 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 so, goes without saying, Stan. You're absolutely right, and that's one of the big focuses that we have as well. Is that there's no way that it could be administered by a person that a doesn't understand it or experience it themselves, and b there's no, it, this is an ecosystem that's now being born out of this, which involves the psych, psychedelic assisted therapist, you know, and, 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 yeah. and the psychologist there that, that can walk you through that, the, you know, what, what, what the experience has really meant and what it could mean. And um, yeah. so, uh, um, so completely understand, yes agree with you. So I was telling this would be the, the ideal, I mean, if, if we were doing it now, what we should be do at this point before before psychiatrists can actually have sessions themselves, uh, the holotropic breathwork, you know, would be good for that. They started doing it in CNN. CIIS. CNN. CIIS. Yeah. And, in uh, and we have, I don't know if you've seen our website that... Uh, training. But like it reminds me <laughs> and a lot of work with it yes yeah so so we have now people all over the world that they're waiting now for uh, when the virus uh, situation is not uh, it's better uh, but yeah. yeah but this is really a great learning i mean if you go to these breathwork sessions and you see what happens and they also they learn how to deal with the body work if somebody gets stuck and if there's a problem so important you and know? people who know who can do this uh, uh, um, holotropic breath work they can go uh, work with uh, psychedelics we have seen situation people have much more powerful that you can imagine mm -hmm. and we were thinking even i was thinking maybe you know they get a little on the side but when three hours later they're fine i know this was not an lsd but you know it's a it's the same energy i mean this is this is learning to trust that energy allow this to unfold and also assist people 
to to let this and the, the, the and you know the shakti or the inner the inner healing intelligence whatever you want to call and, it but this can be so powerful you have to be comfortable you know have to know it from yourself and you have to be comfortable and know how to handle these things if people get stuck or scared and so on uh, that then then it's uh, it's really important to have a competent and something assistance. something important is the body work you know yes yes extremely so important. at the beginning when uh, i didn't know that you can use body work and so on we didn't know how this session would end it. Sometimes it was great, like what, what happened to Albert Hoff, uh, Hoffman, you know? Mm, yeah. He had a very difficult experience, but, but was great yeah. at the end. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't always happen. Sometimes you open up something new and don't finish it. Yeah. And then this was, uh, when, you, when you start doing good uh, body work, you can completely uh, uh, integrate this. Absolutely. Yeah. The best integration is a good body work when, when some, there's still some tensions or pains. It can be released in, within minutes, you know, by expression of what's behind it. But you have to know. It's very simple. You know. Yeah, no, it's simple, but you, you have know, to know how to do it. If you know how to do it. So this is part of the of a training. And, and uh, of course, the other, the other uh, part of the training is Stan's new book, sure. I mean, that's the reason why we made it, the, the way of the psycho now, the life's work encyclopedia. It's really, I mean, it should be studied in universities. It's it's the Grofian psychology. I mean, it's a there's a Freud, a Jung, and there's a, the Stan. Uh, we use it as a as a handbook now in uh, yes, in our training, training. You know. Yes. I also just downloaded it on Audible. It's also available on Audible volume. Yes. Oh, this is um, Becca. Is Becca, have you heard it? Yes. Yes, I have. You Becca know, initially we, we really wanted to have it, it and uh, time, yeah. we got about ten actors. Yes. And it was unbelievable. You know, they because they first of all, it's it's very complicated. You know, people have to talk about philosophy, uh, yes. you know, uh, chemistry, everything, <laughs> everything. you know. Uh, so they, they were reading with these theatri theatrical voices and you, you knew they didn't have a clue what they were saying. It was horrible. And it was beginning of pandemic and we thought it would be so good to have the audio book, everybody's at home. And then we listened to the voice and we both all say, no way, this is not, I mean, I said, this is your life's work. We cannot have it spoiled by an ignorant, you know? I mean, ideally Stan would have read it himself, but he can't. And so we were turning down, turning down. And somehow, we somehow, heard, we heard. Uh, yeah, we, it, we, we heard Becca and, and we said, oh my God, I mean, it would be great to have her read it as she's a feminine voice. And, and we, people were saying, but you know, we should, Stan is a, a male, you know, it should, should yeah. be a male. I said, Well, no. and, and so we, we, we said, please read a part. And she read a part and we listened. And this was like, oh my God, she was like this crystal clear mountain spring, knowing everything and being so passionate and beautiful. I mean, we listen to it all the time. It's, it's such an amazing, amazing uh, reading. She, and she read the whole book. Uh, recording, I think in, in eight days or something like that. Yeah, no, I can imagine. I can I imagine mean, you did a brilliant job of it. I'm not done through it yet, but I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, Brigitte and San, I want to be very, very mindful of your time. I also want to be very respectful of your, of, of, of the, um, um, you know, um, uh, of your energy. And, and uh, I, I don't want to, uh, uh, I, I could I could talk to you for hours. Uh, uh, no, my, my energy is that's not a problem. <laughs> um, uh, my problem is my voice. I, I, you know what? You've been incredibly coherent uh, to me. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have known uh, in in any way uh, that you had suffered a stroke. That's when I when I came out of this uh, uh, the operation room, you know, uh, I didn't know what what the cars were. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really improved. No, it's, a, I mean, it's, so and, it, and it's, it's amazing a, how it can can still come. How much can go and go back? You know. Yeah. Well, and it's a, it's it's good when it's a conversational situation that works. Is there are there things that you didn't forget by any chance? Did you by any chance after your stroke? Did you 
did you uh, know about the breathing exercises? Were there things that you that you were kind of surprised that you knew or you had, you know, complete control or understanding of? Did, did you think he, you asking no, if he did remember no. the holotropic breathwork or? Perhaps the holotropic That's breathwork, or was it was there something very unique and that you did remember that you well, know the, the small the small of um, doses you know psychedelics yeah oh you can you know they know now that you can you can you can grow uh, no he said I, do you uh, what did you remember when you when you had the stroke you know what what was so sweet he. Uh, during the stroke, he couldn't. You couldn't say anything, but you always said, "I love yeah. you." And together, this is what he could say. Well, that is that is profound. This was when, yes. Yeah, when she was around, I could still main, maintain, mm -hmm. but then started doing things uh, they put to the laboratory. In, they put him in the in, in the CAT point, scan, I, um, in the CAT scan, and that uh, that you felt you were dying. You died. Yeah. Yeah, and and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, but it was I, I didn't have any any of those kind of um, uh, near death experiences. Uh, no, no archetypes, no life uh, live, life review, uh, nothing. Revenue. Uh, but it was into the like a cosmic uh, a cosmic uh, void, void. You know, like a void. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's it's Not, profound that the, the concept of love and togetherness stayed with you, right? Yes. And that's and then that's you decided, yeah, you had a decision. You said you could make a decision then. Yeah, yeah I, I, mm. I decided that I, I would go back to, to uh, Brigida and also that uh, I'm not, not finished. My, my work was not finished. Mm. I think that people have done before also. Yes. What what so work? there's some kind of degree of I think there's a certain degree of, of uh, choice what, what you do in that situation. What 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 is there that you feel is left to really achieve now um, um, in 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 your work? I mean, the the the, the psychonaut volume one and two are are are, are profound. I, I'm I'm and and uh, this film is 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 incredibly well done. Um, what what do you want to what what is left to achieve for you that that, that you want to see through well it's what what uh, we have now you know this uh, training from all over the world and so on uh, that was a big uh, big one to do uh, okay i so, you know what all the other questions that i had for you which was you know what, what do you think psychedelics offer to society and if you had a chance to meet your 21 year old self again, Stan, what would you tell your 21 year old self um, uh, to do that would be, you know, that would be any different or would you not say a thing? Is there any well, advice you'd uh, give your 21 year old self? Well, we had one that was there at, at uh, once at seven, 17 at that one point, yeah. Well, basically, uh, well, this is a different thing. No, well, basically, that's a different question, sweetheart. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, he's asking now the aha the aha question that you uh, yeah. that you asked. That's a different. That's right? a different. No, but we would. I mean, we would say to our twenty-one-year-old what we already said. I mean, yeah. you know, go inward, go inward, and go in. you know, research these the inner realms to get the whole picture, and so take drugs no do, do good in a psychedelic work <laughs> that's what we would say is there is there anything that you'd like to leave us with uh, before we go into q a next which will be at a different date of course but is there anything that you'd like to to any any parting words um any well, message you, you had um you had a question, which were my aha experiences yes. with Stan. Yes. And I would say, I mean, Stan is a is a complete aha experience <laughs> every 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 minute. So, and uh, I uh, I actually I had taken LSD when I was seventeen, and uh, you know by by accident with a friend kind of thing, and this you know was a quite a experience for 17 and I didn't have anybody to talk to. I even studied psychology and 
of course, there was no answer to, <laughs> to these questions. And then I find found Stan's books, you know, and I was like, this was an, a big aha, you know. <laughs> was, oh, wow, this guy really knows something, you know. And I understood that my experiences were not absolute, but part of a whole process. And, uh, and so I went to see him at a talk. And that was the second aha, because I wanted to see if he, if he is like he writes, and that was totally clear. And then, uh, then when I came to Esalen and I, we start, you know, did the work, it felt like actually like I was remembering it. It was not like I was learning something new. I was remembering something I already had known. I think she was natural, you know. Yes, it like... it was a, it was fantastic, you know, to to really work together and learn this way. And and for me, it was great because I I didn't have any limiting uh, trainings before, you know. So I I, I started with the biggest worldview and the most far out <laughs> technique that that is around besides psychedelics and you know so and and i mean the the, the biggest and most wonderful aha uh -huh, <laughs> we have is this unconditional love we have for each other it's a i mean this is just a it's just the most most beautiful thing to live for and uh, i feel so blessed and uh, you know as we really feel feel like two halves of one soul and to have that to have that possible to live uh you know it's it's never too late ralph metzner mm -hmm. said for in a toast for our wedding party and to have that gift in life of this unconditional love and with this beautiful beautiful man is just the the best <laughs> thing to have <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I would stop I saying it. now how great you are because you yeah. don't like it. So. It, it, it. This interview cannot end on a better note. Um, that's a perfect example of, you know, entanglement. And, and so um, yours is a wonderful love story. And again, it's an inspiration to many. Thank you for the that good. It was work. so wonderful to meet you. Uh, right. Please stand. I just, was, I just wait, you know, for uh, be able to travel again. We can, we can actually see you in in person. I look forward to meeting you in person, um, and we look forward to the the Q and A exercise that will follow this uh, on the twenty fourth of June. But thank you ever so much for your time, for your energy, um, for sharing. And, 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 you know, for me, what has clearly been the last hour has been an aha moment for me just to, just to, to hear you and, and to, to, to listen to this, to this wonderful journey of yours. So thank you. Wow. <clears throat> so I um, hope you see why you know for me this ranks as being one of the top conversations in in, in my life um, uh, um what i can say is that what the first question i asked Stan um and brigitta was what is the meaning of life and uh what does this all mean and why are we here and although the the, the answer registered with me i didn't realize until much later in the interview that it was in the pauses, in the moments where Stan and Brigitta really looked into each other's eyes in the shared moments um, that were so engaging. And it was as if nobody else existed except the two of them. And as Brigitta mentioned, they're one soul split in two. That if that is not the answer to life, then um, we're missing the boat. And, and um, if, if we can be, if I can be uh, as, as lucky to have that, I, I don't have that. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I ever will, but I certainly uh, sure as hell I'm going to strive for it um, because to me, that's the answer to life. So um, I, I can't tell you how privileged uh, I am and I'm, I'm sure many in the audience are as well uh, for, for us to witness that and to share that. On that note, I'm going to hand it over to Jonas and Christina um, to, uh, to take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Saad. It has been really wonderful to be listening to this interview again and uh, it's really a pleasure an honor for us to have the opportunity to present to your community to the noetic fund community this project we are working on which is the psychedelic literacy fund and share a little bit more what motivates us 
what inspired us in doing this and uh, and share what are our vision for the future so our vision is to expand education about psychedelics globally addressing the language barrier and I'm, we are referring to the fact that many people who don't speak english uh, have difficulty accessing the information that we have available in in english and so one of the things we want to do is to finance the translation of books about psychedelic therapy in different languages through partnerships with publishers and we started this last year so last year we decided to create a fund and uh, we decided to donate ourselves something and invited friends to do that as well and and this uh, intention connected us with wonderful people who decided to join us in this mission uh, i want to spend a few words about uh, our strategy and at the beginning we were thinking how can we build trust with people that don't know us and uh, we decided to create a fund with a foundation and uh, in this sense uh, when, whenever somebody wants to support us the donation doesn't go to us personally it goes to the foundation and we have uh, an agreement with maps so we can only give these funds to a non-profit and in our case is maps and then through maps we give the funds to the publishers so we wanted to build in the inception of this project an element of accountability and trust and for this reason we are also deciding to work mostly with major donors and we haven't done any crowdfunding campaign which is a lot of time and a lot of work we see this as a side project in our lives and uh, for me personally the motivation comes from the fact that i received a lot a huge benefit from reading books in my own language i'm from italy i was born in rome and when i was a teenager i had the opportunity to read many books in particular the books of stanislav grof and they have helped me incredibly understanding my own journeys and it, they really changed the course of my life and uh, i felt inspired to study philosophy and uh, psychology and also they've been uh, support in my work with uh, psychedelic medicines and another inspiration for me comes from an existential question that i have asked myself in the recent years and the question is what is generosity and how do we feel when we are generous and how do we feel when we are not and this led me to think about philanthropy in a different way and uh, it led me to understand how philanthropy can be an extremely rewarding experience and i was able to experience this uh, for the first time probably uh, last year when uh, thanks to some investment in cryptocurrency i found myself in a position where i could make a donation for something that is meaningful to me in particular in this case for translating books about psychedelics so i want to hand it to christina also to share a little bit her experience with this project and then we will tell you what are our next goals and then we look forward to hearing your questions yes so um i would like to say that we started our project with the best book that we could have started with which is the way of the psychonaut and the amount of support and, and generosity from other donors has been so overwhelming and it really speaks to um, Stan's 60 years of dedication to this field. And um, I would like to you know, say that my parents are from the Philippines and um, we have an inherently global mission, right? So we're an Italian and a Filipina living in San Francisco, translating the work of a Czech psychiatrist. Like this is the global <laughs> mission that we have. And, um, with permission, I'd like to read just the table of contents of The Way of the Psychonaut, volumes one and two. And I invite you to think about a language that you um, speak, your, another language that you speak, or a country that you've traveled to, and imagine these chapter headings translated in that language. There are 14. Chapter one, the history of psychonautics, ancient, aboriginal, and modern technologies of the sacred. Two, the revision and reenchantment of psychology, 
legacy from a half century of consciousness research. Three, maps of the psyche in depth psychology toward an integration of approaches. Four, architecture of emotional and psychosomatic disorders. Five, spiritual emergency, understanding and treatment of crises of transformation. Six, holotropic breathwork, a new approach of psychotherapy and self-exploration. Seven, self-exploration and therapy with psychedelics, importance of set and setting. Eight, synchronicity, C.G. Jung's A-causal connecting principle. Nine, holotropic states of consciousness and the understanding of art. 10, the Promethean Ill impulse, higher creativity. 11, the archetypes, guiding principles of the psyche and the cosmos. 12, roots of human violence and greed, consciousness research and human survival. 13, Psyche and Thanatos, Psycho-Spiritual Dimensions of Death and Dying. And 14, The Cosmic Game, Exploration of the Farthest Reaches of Human Consciousness. So imagine this material translated into all of the languages in the four corners and, and trans... Um, given to the trainers of these people in those countries and how important it is that um, this knowledge be accessible. Thank you, Christina. So I would like now to share with you the first achievement of these uh, 12 months and the next steps for us. First achievement, uh, I'm happy to share with all of you that uh, thanks to the support of a generous donor, we have been able to finance, co-finance the translation and publication of uh, volume two of this book by Stan Groff in German. And Stan and Brigitte got the book just uh, a few days ago. They sent us a beautiful picture and uh, this is really wonderful. Volume one was already translated when we started this and we were able to join uh, this mission and support uh, volume two. And the next book that is coming out with our support is a realm of the human unconscious published in 1975 by Stan Groff. And this will come on July 1st in just a few days in Italian. On Stan's 90th birthday. Yes. And uh, there are many more. So we also initiated a partnership uh, with a publisher in Italy for the Web of the Psychonaut. Volume one is already translated, it will be published and be, it will be on sale by the end of this year. And volume two will follow soon after. And we have raised also enough for guaranteeing the French publication of the book. And we are now fundraising from the Spanish. So I want to show very shortly with you one page PDF that shows really the summary of what we've done and uh, after this here it is i also want to mention uh we shared uh, a similar pdf with with saad so if any one of you want to review this it's on our website and we can share it with you but basically, uh, as, uh, as we mentioned, we decided to focus on this in the first year of the project on the book, The Way of the Psychonaut. These are some existing edition of the book. So the book is already available in, uh, in Chinese, in uh, Czech, in German, and in Portuguese. And uh, it's under translation in uh, other languages. Of course, it's available in English. It was published by MAPS in 2019. And uh, the first round of funding that closed in May, uh, we were able to raise more than $100,000. And this allowed us to really expand our operations and support more translation that we expected at the beginning. So we are hoping by October of this year to raise uh, another $100,000 so that we can continue supporting those courageous publishers that are interested in this book. And our vision is to create a, a cycle so that when people read the books and they learn about the Psychedelic Literacy Fund, if they can, they can reach out to us and decide to support 
translation of other books. And this will continue going on. And yeah, it, just in closing, I, I wanted to um, really give appreciation to the Noetic Fund and, and Saad in particular for your flexibility in this um, hybrid pre-recorded live Q&A model because um, we've been enjoying the noetic sessions of intellectual discovery since December, but um, I think this is the first time where it's been this, this kind of joining of the, of the two times. Yeah. <clears throat> so. One more thing I would like to add is that uh, in other fields, when you write a good book, usually after a while, publisher reach out in different countries to translate the book. And for the person who wrote the book, imagine it's a book about family constellation or Reiki or something else. You as an author, you have the opportunity to share your skills, your techniques with the world through workshop trainings and different other kind of services you can provide. But in, in the case of psychedelic therapy, unfortunately, this is not the case because of the war on drugs. Everything that Stan has been able to investigate in his life is not something that he has been able to share through trainings, retreats, in the same way uh, a person who does some kind or other techniques for self-growth can do. And uh, this has impacted uh, the capacity to share this knowledge, has impacted uh, the interest of publisher in translating these books. And that's why I believe philanthropy has an important role to play in the same way philanthropy has played an important role in supporting MAPS over Research. these decades. And now we're in a different chapter of history. There is a huge amount of capital coming into this industry. And as Rick was mentioning recently, it's just interesting that we can speak about an industry because this was not the case until a few years ago. And therefore, if we think uh, as a, an ecosystem, the question is, uh, where can we make an impact with our resources that will have a, a lasting impact uh, on the whole ecosystem for decades to come? We believe translating these books in different languages is one of the many steps we can address to support the community and to support this industry. And so I will close it here, unless Christina want to add something more. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love to open for- You want to add something? <laughs> sure, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, you seem like angels who came from somewhere. Uh, um, and what was very interesting uh, for us that uh, so many synchronicities happened, like there's almost somebody script scripting it, you know? Mm. But you, Tora, is just amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. And also thank you so much for Saad and for everybody out there who is interested in supporting supporting Stan's work. Thank you everybody so much for, for helping to make this. We have actually uh, saw you personally once, you know, here because of uh, what is happening in the world and the COVID and so on. So we really hope when we are able to actually come together and at some of you will say that maybe we can we can meet you in Italy. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Yeah. So thank you everybody so much. Thank yeah, you so much. Sad. Just incredible. Mm. Please. So, sad. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, please. That's another thing. It you know came somewhere from uh, <laughs> we don't know where from, but <clears throat> And you said you have such big hearts, so the, the love is there, so it's, it's never it's too late. <laughs> thank you. No, no, I, I thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I, I just wanted to add to that, you know, um, in terms of an impact investment, in terms of making a huge difference, this falls within the category of teaching a person how to fish, mm -hmm. right? And so th this, is the, this is the sort of information we need to disseminate and that will help so many people with uh, their own personal journeys and, and what they're going through. And it's, uh, um, uh, it's, it's incredibly important work. Um, and, and these two volumes speak volumes. And I think it is, uh, it is imperative for us to try and do what we can. Um, and just for, for everybody's knowledge, I personally am donating towards this endeavor, as I've mentioned to Jonas and Christina. Um, be, be, th th there's nothing more impactful in terms of what we're doing in the industry than initiatives like this. So thank you so much for, for undertaking that. 
Um, I'll hand it so back Sasa, to you. Please, yes. Yes, Brigitte. Speaking of fishing, there is this saying that uh, Freud was fishing while sitting on a whale, and I really think that Stan is the whale. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, do. So yeah. I just wanted to say one thing that we were asking, uh, you know, about what, what I am uh, interested in, in, in uh, uh, relation from what, what came out of psychedelics for me and other things. And I mentioned that it was between Hinduism and Buddhism. But of course, you know, there have been so many other mystical incidents. Like a a tremendous connection with Sufis and so on, and uh, Christian, Christian yeah. mystical yeah, tradition, yes. and Taoism, Taoism, of course, you know, too. so all mystical. Uh, but traditions. basically, we are interested in the mystical branches, you know. Yeah, it's a. It's very much like a pyramid, isn't it? No matter where you start at the base, they all lead to the same spot at the top. Yeah. So, um, and that's one of, you know, the lessons that I learned from my studies was to realize at the end of the day, regardless of how the message was delivered, they're all saying the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Every one of them talks about a need to do the inner work, which mm -hmm. is the hard work. And as many people say, be careful before you, you start that journey because the work is hard and, and it can be very taxing and, and it's not a walk in the park in any way um so if you're going to undertake that journey just make sure you know what you're you're going to be up against because it's so much easier to take the blue pill and just forget about it all um, um but um but but you know like all things um you know in the words of virgil the you know uh, fortune favors the bold and fortune is not just in terms of material wealth it's also about um, you know, mystical wealth, spiritual wealth, which is which is so much more important. So, um, well, this inner journey is certainly more interesting than sitting on hard church benches and not having an experience. Yes, yes, and as we know, uh, you know, uh, NYU, uh, Tony Boses, along with Roland Griffiths, have undertaken a project uh, where they um, have about twenty-three religious leaders around the world that have participated in uh, an experience where. We'll see what the results will be at the end of this year, um, mm. but our understanding is that uh, you know it's uh, the, the results are going to blow us away, and uh, so it's not it's not that psychedelics and the experiences that we have dissuade us from the you know the sort of um, um, uh, other ways of of having a mystical experience or understanding of religion or participating in religion that it, it somehow validates it, it reaffirms it. And, um, and that is what is, again, just a, a, a truly incredible part of this journey and, and this exercise. So hopefully the next 10 years will be, we'll have a lot more to do with destigmatizing what's going on. And we're able to, to tell, you know, and, and really relate this to folks in a way where they're not scared by, about it or, or by it. And, and that it, it resonates with them at their level. Um, because quite frankly, there is no single better example of personalized or customized experience or medicine than psychedelics. You can administer to seven different people, they will have very distinct personal experiences. Mm -hmm. It is the most, I'm going to use this word again, although I'll get slapped for it, it's the most profound example <laughs> of customized or personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. And it is medicine. You know, what is fascinating for me now, um, as you were saying, we have many experiences with many people, you know, and um, usually uh, the spiritual experiences are coming into different, uh, different uh, countries, different, uh, different uh, um, spiritualities. You know, for example, uh, you know, I have the experiences, not just Buddhism, uh, um, uh, Hinduism, uh, Christianity, Sufi, you know, uh, Australian experiences. Uh, from the Aborigines and, and uh, from, from uh, Greece, you know. And that's fascinating for me because this has to be a new phenomenon, you know, no phenomenon. 
because otherwise we could not have, you know, different uh, mythologies if, if the experiences were coming all over the place. So it means that for quite a while, these different uh, religions must have been focusing on one particular um, area, for example, you know, have uh, uh, from from uh, Tibet, you know, you have Tibetan uh, uh, icons and so on, beautiful, beautiful rituals and beautiful pictures and so much in other countries. Uh, but now, uh, you know, this obviously somehow this this whole un unconscious uh, is opening so they can we can go anywhere and it's parallel to what is happening also on the surface you know with the last of course being an in internet but we can now get uh, you know um, um, particularly with translations and so on we can get um, now spiritual experiences from from all over the world we can have uh, uh, beautiful music everywhere you know we can just look at and and uh, can have this experience of uh, of other countries so this has to be new because otherwise we would not have specific uh, uh, spirituality would not have specific um, mythologies and so on yeah no well said uh, stan i i keep remembering one of David Fishman's uh, stories about the experience that he had deep sea underwater. He's a deep sea diver and, and he dives deep at, 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 you know, in the middle of the night um, in, in certain areas in, in the Caribbean for the purpose of really having a mystical experience by way of looking at these, um, you know, uh, species of fish that, that glow and just the way that those lights appear and, and surround yeah, him yeah. and you're weightless and you don't hear anything. And, you know, I mean, what a profound experience that must be. And you're deep underwater, right? And it's black, but then you see these lights. You're also scared because you're in the middle of just darkness and, and you don't know what's in around you. And then all of a sudden these lights appear. I mean, um, you know, it's, a, a, again, yet another path that you start at the bottom of the pyramid that ultimately leads you to the same place at the top. Um, I know that there, there, there are several questions and I also want to be very mindful of your time, of course. Um, and I'll just hand it over to Jonas and, and Christina to, to initiate that and, and, and manage that process, please. Absolutely. So first of all, everyone, if you have an additional question, feel free to write them in the chat or ask for permission to speak. And I see a couple of questions. And about the first one, um, what I want to say, the question is, have they done body work during a psychedelic assisted session? If so, any advice, tips, uh, what not to do? What to do and what not to do. Right. So there is definitely much could be said about this in the, uh, the limited time we have uh, force us to really make a summary but something i want to say is that uh, the whole work of autropic breath work came out of witnessing how people started breathing in a different way during psychedelic session and so it has been very natural for for stan to develop this autropic breath work technique that includes body work by witnessing what works and what doesn't work so when people were starting breathing uh, it was uh, kind of intuitive to notice that if you were uh, also using some kind of body work, some specific kind of touch, this was helpful in the process. So in many shamanic tradition, some kind of uh, touch or body work is part of the way the guide facilitate the process, but it also requires extensive knowledge, extensive intuition. And so a long time of apprenticeship or training that's why I think it would be, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have the capacity in the time I have and the limited education and training I have to really say what to do, what not to do. But I would really invite everybody who is interested in uh, exploring this 
to consider the graph legacy training as well as reading the books and uh, and this is a kind of knowledge intuitive knowledge that comes with the practice and uh, going to the next question christina do you want to read it yes this is a question from just frame stan thanks so much for all of your great work you have said that when you were young you wanted to be an animator did you watch the films of the great czech animator Carol Zeman, they seem to be so psychedelic. Did Zeman ever experiment with LSD? Did you ever meet Carol Zeman? We should make an animation together. <laughs> so about this, I wonder if Stan would be able to respond to this. We have worked with you know thousands and thousands of people, and we usually in the workshops we just use the first name. No, it's a painter. It's a it's a it's about animated movies. About the animated movie. This is a Czech Czech animated movie maker Karel Zeman. You have not met him, huh? Karel Zeman. Zeman Czech Czech. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Did he ever yeah, experiment with LSD? He's asking. Do you know if he ever took LSD? We had quite a few, but not not then, not 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 with him. Not then, no. But you know him. Do you meet? Did you meet him? Did you know him? I, you know they are they are um, um, impossible to get it on the internet. I believe. Have you I mean, met him? Did not, you? Not personally. Okay. No, no. no. But, <laughs> but it's possible to get the drawings. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have another question in the chat. The question is uh, first to, to Stan Groff, but only if he's willing to answer. Did I understand it right that you used microdosing as part of therapy after stroke? You're muted, Brigitte. You want to unmute? Working. Okay, now. Yes, of course. You know, they're now uh, finding that, that there could be actually changes in the neurons uh, growing uh, after these small dosages. So, of course, having had, uh, you know, the stroke, I, I'm, of course, it's the first thing that I would like to do. Yeah. Thank and you. Actually, start, starting after the stroke, we started from very small dosages because they were very... Uh, careful you know and then we found out that it really uh, does not have to limit limit it for me at this point mm -hmm. and we have this question also yeah, here I'm address this one too I'll yeah these both. Together. so first of all uh, what other other books that we are considering we have a whole pipeline and the other books that come next for us would be lsd and the mind of the universe by chris bash which is really a wonderful book came out just uh, last year mm -hmm. and we met the author here in San Francisco when he came to present the book. And uh, we believe this is really a wonderful, wonderful book and we hope it will be translated in as many languages as possible. Yeah, yeah that, that's a, just for those, that's, a, that's an incredible amount of research that went into it and what he put himself through 11 years of doing LSD, was it every day? Over the course of 20 year, uh, yeah, yeah. high dose, the interesting high doses, very high doses, like 550, 600, uh, and and um, and many of those were incredibly, incredibly dark experiences that he had. So, yeah, it's a uh, I haven't finished the book, it's on my bedside table with 19 others, but I would highly recommend that one for those that are are interested in in learning about his experience because that that is an undertaking that is just uh, unbelievable. Another book we want to translate is Consciousness Medicine by Francoise Bourza. We also have The Mortality Key in the list by Brian Murarescu. We also have Acid Trip, which is a beautiful narration of the history of MAPS and uh, MDMA for PTSD. And Good Chemistry by Julie Holland. So you can find our pipeline on the website, psychedelicliteracy.org. 
we are also open for suggestions and if a person or a donor has a strong connection with a specific book we are very open to have a conversation and see how we can facilitate that but uh, in terms of which books we are planning to translate and support in the next years uh, the best advice i can give is to have a look at the website and we made a list we see this as a long-term project we have a, a 10-year plan for at the moment and we really hope this will continue for many more years to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to speak to the um, to the Spanish speaking. Um, somebody had mentioned Mexico, and just to say that the most common first language is Chinese, followed by distantly Spanish, and then English. And so we want to actually raise funds for the Spanish version of the Way of the Psychonauts so that we can finish this this year. Um, so. Uh, we have another question from for Stan. May I know your opinion about Sufis' practice of whirling and their practice of breath work? Have you ever studied that? Yes, uh, the. Um, uh, Actually, it can be, we have done international uh, conferences uh, and actually the Zusafer, you know, the Halveti, they came several times actually doing Zikr. And actually one amazing thing was that uh, this was when we did it in Bombay, that they do it uh, Zikr and for the first time in the world, they allowed women to come and, and join people in the Zikr. It was wow. amazing, amazing, you know. Yes. Yeah, and just for, for, for those who, who don't know Zikr, um, Shaheen, do you wanna do you wanna talk? I'm I'm happy to, to explain Zikr, but you, you may wanna just unmute yourself and, and just explain what Zikr means. Um hi Sad, thank you so much. Um uh, thanks, Stan. Um yeah, Zikr is basically just like re it's like mantra, it's repeating some of the Islamic verses. Uh, repeatedly and um, that's exactly like just basically repeating a mantra uh, and it, it comes you know with sometimes you know with a repeating movement uh, as well uh, and you know like uh, in some of the tra tra traditions and lineages in, in Sufism which is mostly the Mevlevi uh, you know lineage like the whirling or the turning is also coming with the Zikr um, yeah, but I would like uh, I would love you, Sad, to also add your comments on that. Yeah, no, it's a it's a it's a very distinct um, a whirling where one hand is is facing the heavens and the other hand is facing the earth, and you're whirling on an axis, actually. So it's very much takes into account how the earth rotates, but you get intoxicated through the mantras, uh, which is about a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. So there's no intermediary. It's not like Catholicism or other sects of Islam where you've got to go to a messenger and then they take your message up to the Lord and then they come back and then they, it's a direct relationship. And a very prominent school of thought is that the old school Gnostics, which were the first early Christians or the first Christians that came about 100 years after the death of Christ, that were completely wiped out and annihilated because their viewpoint was very different from sort of what the Catholics believed, of course, um, uh, that they continued to move east and east and ultimately um, became the Sufis. Um, it's not proven, it's a very popular school of thought, but there are a lot of similarities between Gnostics and Sufis in relationship with regards to that one-on-one -on -one relationship with, with the divine entity and the divine force. So um, I'd like to add, um, I'm, the, I'm in training to be a dance leader for the Dances of Universal Peace, which is from the Sufi tradition. Um, and uh, what we say is that zikr is, means remembrance. And so when we connect with the breath, with the movements and the, and the words, then we're remembering where we came from. And it's just, it is very meditative and you held hands in a circle and um, it's kind of like you're rowing a boat, breathing in and out. Allahu. Anyway, we're really off topic, but I love I love that we're talking about this. 
No, but actually it's, it's, it's on topic in one way because it's another form of, of, uh, of intoxication, right? It's a, it, 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 the, the practice and the repetition and doing it in a group where there's shared energy and that energy then vibrates and the frequency goes up and, and it's so incredibly intoxicating that it's a otherworldly experience. And if you do it right with enough people that have the right intentions, it can lead you to some, I'm not going to use the word, I'm not going to use the word, but it can lead you to some pretty <laughs> incredible heights. And so, um, so yeah, if you, th there are many ways in which to participate as an observer, even in a, in a, a Sufi Zikr session, if you get a chance in whichever city you're in, uh, I would, I would certainly recommend it. It's, it's open to all faiths. As uh, Stan would say, it's one of the many technology of the sacred. And I really love this expression because mm -hmm. we are in a world that uh, is uh, expanding the use of technology in so many ways. But in terms of using technology for the exploration of our inner world, we have put so many limitations. And so we are really on a mission to free the use of technology for the exploration of the psyche, for our own healing, growth and evolution. Mm -hmm. And it's so wonderful to really recognize the variety of these tools that we have. Psychedelics is one of them and they deserve to be one option for humankind. Want to be mindful of the time. So I will pass it to Saad to evaluate. Summarize. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, again, um, Stan and Brigitte, I cannot, on behalf of the entire team at Noetic, first and foremost, um, on behalf of, of, of all the audience members that have participated here today, and I'm sorry we can't get to all the questions, uh, because quite frankly, we can go easily for another five hours without missing a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> so uh, cannot thank you enough for your time. And uh, again, cannot thank you enough for, you know, just being without being. You, you, you personify, you epitomize, um, you know, the, the meaning of true love. Uh, I think I've only seen it perhaps uh, once um, uh, for a brief moment in a, in a, in a, in a, in a moment that was captured between uh, Marina Abramovich and Ule when they met after, I don't know, 40 years at MoMA. Um, um, uh, uh, and, and so, um, you're not doing anything. You're just being you, and 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 that's an inspiration in many ways. So, so thank you for your time, and we look forward to having so many more conversations. Um, and if there's anything that we can do to help you with anything, um, needless to say, please let us know. And I would certainly implore and encourage everybody that is listening and those who will listen to this recording um, to you know seriously consider the literacy fund. I mean, it, this is this is one, you know, incredibly impactful way for us to uh, make sure that we disseminate the right kind of information that gets out there in as many languages as there possible so that folks are, are well versed on what it really means. And, and, you know, what is this, what are psychedelics about? What can they help us achieve? And if anything, it's all about the inner work, which is hard work, but, but it can help in a big way. So um, um, if there's anything else you'd like to add, Jonas and Christina, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the last word, please. Or, or Stan and Brigitte, if there's anything else that you'd like to say, please, um, over to you. But from my side and from Noetic, thank you very, very much. Christina would like to say something. Oh, I would just like to say that, you know, as the, as we, as John, uh, sorry. As Stan um, is approaching this 90th um, decade, happy birthday, Stan. Thank you very much. Uh, on July so first. Yeah. I, I want to say that um, to be consoled um, and to know that your legacy lives on and the work that you put in is not for naught, that the torch is, is being passed to a generation that is capable and responsible and caring and that we will, we will do your work um, with utmost care. It's a wonderful gift. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.